I would put out a uh, picture and discussion a short while ago about interfacing old boat anchor receivers with FL Digi. It got quite a response. I wasn't really expecting it. And I decided that if there is uh, some interest in this, why not make a video about this uh, describing how I connect these old radios to FL Digi to uh, decode uh, these digital signals and to what extent can you uh, actually decode a lot of this stuff through one of these old radios. So let's get started. Take a look. And the first thing I'm going to ask is that you don't go run out into your basement and grab one of these radios that's been sitting there for 40 years and try and fire it up just for a video like this. It's probably going to catch on fire or, or release tons of smoke and uh, at the very least you're probably just going to damage the radio. If, if it's not a radio that's been restored, don't attempt this because it's not going to end well. With that out of the way, I'll discuss some simple connections for the receiver radio. Uh, radios like this typically require a connection to an antenna and ground. Uh, I've disconnected the antenna to the FT817, and there's also a ground connection. I've uh, unclipped it for better viewability for this video here. I realize both cables shouldn't be white. But um, the antenna connection is simply clipped uh, to the middle lead of one of my uh, antenna cables, just like so. And I, I've been experimenting back and forth between the HF and the VHF, depending on the time of day. My answer to you is whichever one sounds best. Uh, the other cable, which I've temporarily disconnected here for viewability, uh, clips on to that ground cable there. And that is the ground for the chassis of this radio. And that's it, setup is really easy. This is a receiver. So yeah, please don't use an antenna tuner. It's a receiver, no antenna tuner. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, when you turn on the radio, uh, we're going to be dealing with digital. Uh, even starting off with something simple like CW, receivers like this are going to require at least, at least 15 to 20 minutes with the cover closed to come to temperature. The drift is going to be so incredible that you're just going to be extremely frustrated because it's going to be all over the waterfall. You're not going to be able to capture anything. So turn it on, let it cook, and just walk away and come back in 20 minutes. This particular radio, as with most boat anchors, does not have a speaker. Uh, on this model, uh, there's a phone jack which would go to an external speaker. There's also a provision in the back for a speaker. In my case, I'm using the external phone jack up front. I'm using the uh, Y cable from previous videos. One connection is going to my Bluetooth speaker that I've used in other videos so we can hear the sound actually coming out of the radio. The other connection is going directly into the laptop uh, right here. And this is in support of FL Digi. It's going into the microphone jack. Also, if you think this is going to tune like a modern radio, good luck. This is going to be an experience to get this on frequency. Um, Obviously, starting with FL Digi, uh, one of the greatest tools that we will have afforded to us is going to be the waterfall. Another challenge with these radios is at this time there was no upper sideband or lower sideband. There was only AM and CW, and that was initiated by this knob over here. If CW was on, it was CW. CW was off, it was AM. So we have to use a technique with the adjustment of the BFO, the beat frequency oscillator, uh, to be able to pull in upper sideband, which is what we'll be using uh, predominantly uh, to receive uh, the digital signals. We're going to get started first. We're going to go with CW. CW is the easiest to do. The radio is designed for it. Easy to pick up on FL Digi and obviously to the ear, extremely easy to distinguish. Before we bother looking at FL Digi, we need to hear it first. I turn up the RF gain and we'll have a listen. This is the view of the station. We can still hear it drifting. The radio hasn't fully warmed up yet. I'll bring it back on the frequency. So here's a station we're picking up on CW. There's still a little bit of drift. And I have to be careful when I touch the laptop not to move anything. We can see that it's working just fine. I should point out, of course, that the radio is designed for CW. 
it doesn't present a whole lot of challenge. But I think this demonstrates the challenge with drift. Um, I could probably uh, test some of the filters while I do this, though it would be difficult. We'll see what happens. I know that some of them have terrible effect on digital, but for the purpose of CW, I think to the ear, something like this could be helpful. Uh, to FL Digi, I, I don't always believe something like this would be helpful, right? But we can see that FL Digi is still decoding this just fine. I'll shut off selectivity. Phasing seems to have negligible uh, effect with regard to this. I think that has to do more with the type of interference just coming in that would affect phasing. It's electrical related. And a limiter, it destroys everything in digital. I'll turn it on. Just for, for digital signal, just eats everything away. CW still comes through. Does a good job for CW. And FL Digi could still hear it. You can see the signal is just still moving. I think this covers CW though. We'll move on to the next thing. The next thing is teletype. And uh, teletype functions in the upper sideband on 20 meters uh, for all purposes should not work on this radio again using the beat frequency oscillator it is possible to receive teletype on this radio again this starts to become tricky another problem is, is propagation is terrible it's just absolutely terrible on 20 meters and this is during the day mind you but I'm, I'm able to pick up stations, especially stronger ones, especially if I lock in on it as opposed to using the browser. And there is some drift. And I, I'm hard pressed to believe that the drift is coming for me in all these cases. The reason that I say that is because I'm also looking at some FT8 on the frequency. It's not moving at all. So I can't be drifting in one mode and not the other. There we go. I might have had my uh, BFO set up wrong. Not optimal for uh, reception. See, I moved it the uh, beat frequency oscillator. I've adjusted it the other direction and then turned the band spread. Now it's coming in just fine. So there's RIDI being picked up on this radio, absolutely no problem. Look at that. The QSO in progress. I think this covers the demonstration of RIDI operating uh, off the National 173. We'll move on to something a bit more uh, modern as far as a mode. The next mode we're going to try and do is PSK31, which is getting a bit hard to find these days on 20 meters as people have moved along to the next best thing. It's still out there though. There we go, PSK is coming in nicely now. 
a little jitter. I have to stay away from the table. I'm also going to turn on squelch and, and stop noise from coming in. On the last mode, what we were seeing was any time there was any quiet space, just garbage would, would pour in from static because I didn't have any squelch to stop that from happening. And yes, I'll, I'll be forthcoming. There's, there's a heavy amount of editing going on in this video because nobody wants to sit here for an hour and watch me tune these in. Note that while I'm doing all of this stuff, I have shut off my spot in FL Digi. This radio is not connected to RIDCAT. I don't want to report uh, an erroneous frequency and people who are on it. I could be on 40 meters. I could be on 80 meters. We're not connected to RIDCAT. We're not connected to a Yatsu. Shut off your spot when you're connected to the network and don't report these stations inaccurately to PSK Reporter. You can see that one of the problems I'm contending with here is, is jitter. I'm, I'm almost hard pressed to believe that it may be... Let me load the volume here just a bit. It's a lot, it's a lot me touching the, um, touching the uh, table. I'm going to stay far away from it. Let this thing stabilize. It should start picking up stations. See, now it's, it's straightening out a bit. See if I can adjust this back down with the VFO. Still drifting. I'm thinking if I could get the BFO at a lower frequency, then, then it'll be more stable. I may be right. Actually, it does look better that way. It looks like it's improving. Let's try that again. Wait for the next transmission. It's definitely not moving like it was before. Make it a little louder so we can hear it. It took a little bit more off of it. Now they seem to be moving downward. Oh. Try to get pump it up a little. Ah, right in the middle. There we go. Coming in just fine. Look at that. Looks like a Cuba station. Looks like I gotta get that right at a sweet spot. If it too high it drifts up, too low it drifts down. So now I got a, a slight drift up, but the question is, can I get it within the drift that it can track it, right? That's the question. Let's watch it now. There it is. There's the station. That's the ticket. The this particular radio that that BFO in a certain position is going to drift up or drift down. And we're watching other stations now coming in on the um, on the uh, um, the PSK browser as as I'm able to stabilize that. This is the part of the idiosyncrasies of these radios. You have to know this about the particular radio. We got a perfect CQ coming in now. I mean, if I had that squelch turned on to suppress any garbage. I got it just a hair down now. 
Will it stay down? There it is. Look at that. There we go. Guantanamo, Cuba. And this is with squelch on. Of course, now that I get it working, the signal goes to crap. You know. There's definitely a demonstration. There's, a, there's another issue here, obviously, and that's the radio itself. But, and, and, and that's trying to see why we're getting so much drift. Here's a second station coming in down here at 700. And we can see KA2GQQ calling CQ. Yeah, that's the ticket, getting that, that, that sweet spot on the uh, BFO. So the, so the BFO doesn't drift. That's what's drifting is the BFO on my radio. I think this demonstrates, though, that PSK-31 is working uh, on, an, on an old unit using a, a BFO in conjunction with uh, AM. Demonstrated right here. So we can take what we've learned uh, with this issue on this particular radio with the BFO to stabilize uh, more complicated uh, digital modes that we will do in the next video. This is KJ4TLB. Thanks for watching.